I, I tell my students, I tell everybody this, when I open, begin a creative writing class, I say, I know you've heard all your life, write what you know. Well, I am here to tell you, you don't know nothing. Ain't that the truth. So do not write what you know. Think up something else. You know? <laughs> write about a young Mexican woman working in a restaurant and can't speak English. Or write about a famous mistress in Paris who's down on her luck. Or, you know, I give them all these ideas, and I have to tell you, they really do well. They write way out of the box. Once you open that door and say, you know, I don't want to hear about your grandmother, I don't care about your love, you better, you know, forget that. Let's go somewhere else. So, you know, that's my way. The act of writing, for me, is you really do get to know the characters really well. For me, they're sort of like ghosts. I know what they look like, although I may not describe them. They talk, and if they're not talking to me, then I don't have their names right, or something's wrong. But I can hear them, and their speech, what they say, what they think, and I don't want this to sound too goofy, but it's, it's like you really know. Some of them you have to shut up because like other ghosts or all ghosts, they don't have any conversation except about themselves. So I remember that was very true with Pilot. Oh, Pilot, my God. I had to just shut her up because she was eating up the book. She was really eating it up and I, it wasn't about her. I mean, she was in it, but it was <laughs> the song of Solomon. It's extraordinary. You had a view into black America to be in that time when there was such a deep, you know, reaction to the black civil rights movements. Um, and you yourself were actually publishing these people who people were saying, these are goddamn communists, these mm -hmm. are traitors, these right. are people who are trying to overthrow, and some people kind of said, yeah, I'm trying to overthrow the country. Right, right. No, I, um, I always felt that the narrative that African Americans, particularly political ones, told, if they were manipulated by or in the hands of the mainstream publishing, it was going to automatically be restrained, and it wasn't going to be totally obvious. You know, sort of like Frederick Douglass and those slave stories, you can feel them withholding mm. because they're writing for abolitionists, and they don't want to upset them too much. Um, and that gaze and that control, it, to me, is obvious. So I'm looking for projects that come from within are unapologetic about what they are, what they're saying, and what they intend for other African Americans or anybody else to know. Even with this, what you were saying just now about shifting the narrative center of the telling. I think the reason so many of these books are still important, so many of these books are embedded in the canon, mm -hmm. has to do with that very, very subtle shift at the heart of them, I would argue, that they were facing you that they were writing you, and that in fact, in the heart of these books is the unspoken premise that there is a black woman as mm -hmm. the reader. True. When you get somebody like, uh, I don't know, Gail, or uh, <coughs> Tony Cade, <coughs> or Dumas, you could just indicate that they don't have to, that's not really the audience, and it wouldn't be private. You know, it would be like being Tolstoy. You're a Russian, and you write for Russians, not for little colored girls in Ohio. You know, once you take your own area in your own soil and dig deep into that, and if you're good enough at it, it's available to everybody. <laughs> you don't have to direct it at an, a vague audience that you think is perhaps not yours.